Okay, uh, right now we're going to talk about something that is more important than just about any other thing uh, when it comes to model aircraft, and that is adjusting and measuring your center of gravity. Uh, this is a Great Plains CG machine. This was $35. This a device is something that nobody should be without. I don't care whether you're a builder, whether you're flying these things foamies, uh, modding them, not modding them, uh, different batteries, whatever. We're going to demonstrate exactly how this device is used and, uh, and that should uh, explain its importance. Okay, so for the most part, um, every manufacturer of every aircraft, even when you buy kits, I'll just move that there so you can read that. Um, every manufacturer, even kit manufacturers, will tell you uh, the recommended center of gravity location for the aircraft. Uh, for the park zone, BF109 slash ME109. I don't. I call it an ME109. I like it. I like it that way. <laughs> ME comes off my tongue a lot better than BF. Anyways. The center of gravity location for this aircraft is recommended at 2 and 3 eighths inches. So in order to use the CG machine, the Great Plains CG machine, you see we have a scale here that's measured in inches. Okay, and uh, what we're going to do is slide that to 2 and 3 eighths, 1 eighth, 2 eighths. There's 3 eighths. I just have to line, look at that real careful. Okay, 2 and 3 eighths. And we make sure that that's the same on both sides. Two, one eighth, the visual, three eighths. Kind of hard to see with that light in my eyes. There we go. Okay, now with those set like that, you want to make sure that you use the battery that you intend to have in the aircraft when you fly it. Okay, um, whether it be the stock one or whatever, I still recommend checking these things because a tail heavy aircraft is impossible to control. Uh, everybody knows that a nose heavy plane, you can fly a nose heavy plane a lot easier than you can a tail heavy one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip the battery into the plane. We don't even need to plug it in. I mean it's a nice thought and everything. You can if you want to uh, and strap it down. Now these batteries can be slid and moved around. Now what I recommend for these guys is that um, after you've determined what position this battery needs to be in, you can put a piece of Velcro, stick a piece of Velcro on the battery. Uh, what I'm going to do with this one right now is I'm just going to check it right the way it is. And we'll see whether this airplane is nose heavy, tail heavy, whatever it is. So uh, with your CG machine set at 2 and 3 eighths, as the manufacturer recommends, we'll turn the aircraft over and center it on the machine with these little pins right up against the leading edge of the wing somewhere in that area slide the plane forward okay we can see at the moment that the plane is a little nose heavy level would be right in that area and that little bit amount there that you see can easily be compensated for by simply moving the battery and I'm going to demonstrate that. Actually I'm going to show you just how sensitive this thing is. If I take that off it actually goes more nose heavy. So what I'm going to do and see if I can't figure out. Oh I'm going to have to take the plane off there. I should not have attached that the way I did. Well, we want to hold it in there but now I think I said that the aircraft was a bit nose heavy, so I'm going to try and move the battery back a little bit, and I'm not going to move it very far, like I'd say less than a half of an inch, and we'll put it back onto the, back onto the device and see what happens. And again, you bugger, it's a good idea to remember uh, where that position is, mark it with your marker. Um, I'm not particularly fussy how you do it, but use one of these things because it's probably the best tool you're ever going to get your hands on when it comes to this. I got to come around here and make sure that that's poking a hole through my wing.
And look at that, it still appears to be a bit nose heavy. Now I've gone through this, this is a little better than it was. We'd like the aircraft to be here. But knowing that it's nose heavy is going to tell you that uh, you're going to be able to fly it. A tail heavy aircraft is an aircraft that's impossible to fly. And now the battery is as far back as it's going to go. I would not hesitate flying this aircraft. It's not, it's not pulling one of these, okay? I would not even hesitate flying that aircraft at that balance right there. Um, it's just a good idea to check all this stuff. Now that battery's up. The wiring is getting in the way and everything. I mean, this is something that takes a little bit of time. Uh, once you get used to using this uh, machine here, you won't have any trouble uh, assuring that your airplane is at the very least balanced or a little bit nose heavy. You absolutely want to avoid a tail heavy aircraft. They just will not cooperate in the air and uh, most people that's flown a tail heavy plane will tell you uh, all it wants to do is crash. So after all your work, modding and everything else, the last thing you want is a crashed aircraft. I really would highly suggest buying one of these. And uh, that's about the end of that. So uh, I think we've done a fairly good job demonstrating. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But um, hopefully you guys get some use out of that. And uh, I uh, hope that you all run out and buy one. Because uh, all these, uh, my plane was tail heavy. My plane was no uh, nose heavy excuses. Um, really kind of don't fly with me. Uh, it's easier to check it and make sure. So uh, thanks for having a look uh, once again at my videos and please uh, comment and rate and I hope you guys have good luck. Happy flying guys. We'll see you again.